So cool. I'm loving this. Wow, this is kind of good, oh, right? God, you're such a fucking builder. I fucking <laughs> love it. Yeah, you, and you're always like ready to talk shop. I love it. It's amazing. It's amazing. I feel like we're going, right? Yep. I feel like I know all this stuff about the business that's no longer applicable. <laughs> And I have to pass it on as quickly as possible well, before you, the business changes. You know what? Actually, it's like, because, you know, when we first, like, had that dinner in New York, you were, like, saying, <laughs> yeah, I'm the original. Hi, guys. <laughs> and I, I, like, didn't realize you were, like, more of, like, a VJ, but, you know, because I know you as a comedian. Yeah. Um, so you do know this, like, sort of <laughs> antiquated 90s, like, talk about sweetheart, like, fucking ass slapping, and you fucking made it through, bitch. You survived that shit. But the thing is, it's not different. It just looks different the way that, like, you know, mass incarceration is slavery. It's just like <sighs> this, you know, it's just taken, it's the, another generation. So the things that, and I, I think you continue clearly... <laughs> Clearly, you continue to analyze and update the operating system or whatever, but it's like it's it is still the same. It is in a lot of ways, and, and it's interesting. And you're the perfect person to get into this with because it's such a dangerous territory to talk about in terms of my own internalized misogyny, sexism, uh, what's appropriate. It, it sometimes takes it w one of the youngins around here to go like, "Yeah, it's eight o'clock. We're going home." And I'm like, no, no, it's eight o'clock. What do you mean? We ordered dinner and we worked till midnight. Hundred. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're going. We have plans with our families, and we're like, oh, so you'll come after? I mean, at one, at one thirty. Like, I mean, I this weekend I was like working on this presentation thing, and I was like, oh, I'll just send it to my assistant. And I was like, oh no, it's a Saturday. Like those days are over. <laughs> I'm <clears throat> I'm 33, and I'm just to mark like my whatever, and I'm like caught between where I'm like. Boundaries are really important. And it's like, well, why are you shouting that? And it's like, because I, wow. I'm, it's not in my bones yet, mm -mm. but I'm trying. And it's going, I'm setting a boundary. Now I need you to just do the rest of the work because I can't, I'm not fully ready to do it myself. So the mental, emotional work to retain the boundary, you mean? Yeah. Or just, I'm giving it to you. I'm, I'm passing you the ball. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I'm saying. That's, that's what I do where like my assistant is like, Amazing boundary, like the, like our company is, uh, it's really amazing how we are like enacting these healthy boundaries. And I'm like, I think I tell her like, good night so that she stops working. But then I don't. It's hard. We have to like heal ourselves by, you know, um, it's a dynamic. <clears throat> so <laughs> you met Grace downstairs. She's 24. She's, uh, she's new on the team and she, uh, <laughs> she, uh, the first day she was here, she there was like a plastic bag. She's like, where do you put your plastic bags? And I was like, uh, and I was like, I literally was like, um, where is the plastic bag? Like, I literally was like, you know, we threw them out the window when I was a kid. Yeah, but, yeah, you know what I mean? Hysterical. It's really the, and then it was lunchtime. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm shoveling like candy in my mouth uh -huh. on a Zoom. <laughs> And she's like, I'm gonna grab somebody to eat. And I'm like, cool. I fully expect her to just like jam a go-gurt down her throat, like yeah. deep throw to go-gurt. Right, right. I turn around, <laughs> she's fully cooking an omelet at the stove. And I was just like, in since when? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> she's like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And it's also not even conducive to good work. And what I found that made me, this is the sick way to get healthy. I was so afraid of um, reinforcing negative stereotypes about women that I was like, you can't be frazzled. You can't be hysterical. You can, like, just because I don't want them to have that on you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, I was doing it for myself or for the that right That you were reasons. saying it to them, you mean? No, just in like the way that I was working, like crazy frazzled. Blah, blah, yes, blah. yes. I yes. was like, people already think I'm emotional and histrionic and hysterical and don't deserve to be here and can't control my emotions. I have to just overcorrect. And then it kind of becomes muscle memory. Uh huh. Whatever totally. gets you there. Overcorrection is so, is so huge. And like, sometimes I, uh, like 24, 25 year olds will help me not be so overcorrecting about race. Ooh. I'm so overcorrecting that it's like racist or it's just like crazy <laughs> where I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, um, you know, in my head, I'm just like, you stupid white bitch you stupid white bitch you think you know bitch and it's like 
this isn't this isn't healthy and it's not correct and it's like I'm like I don't know cutting myself short by so much where you have to be able to just fucking be to you know like yes. having trouble existing I guess yes. and also like my whiteness I I'll cut out a slice of my existence because of my whiteness mm-hmm. and it's like I don't know we have to be present and exist in order to embody the change of what it means to be a white person. Yeah. Like you have to, you know, it doesn't help to be so filled with shame that you're like nuts putting your shit on somebody else, not um, giving yourself the space to be. Like every, like all these different types of people are here on, on this planet, yeah. you know? Um, it's hard to, it's really hard that what you're saying is so powerful because I spend so much of my time trying to figure out what shame is productive and what shame is a liability because shame serves a really important purpose in society. You know, we feel shame to not do bad things. Like it's worked in a lot of ways, but if we're living in shame, we're frozen, we're paralyzed, we're not functioning optimally and we're not thinking clearly. It's a tricky one. Yeah. And it's also like, we um, deserve to have a little shame. We should sure. have some. For sure. And it's a, it's a volume thing. Mm. It's a duration thing. Like how long do you let it last, you know? And when do you move on and, become more productive and healthier. And like the healthier the healthier we are as individuals, the healthier the whole is. Yeah. So that's a fucking tough one. As I've been ingrained to self-deprive, minimize, put myself last. I thought that was like nice, especially as a boss. I'll go home last. I'll do all, you know what I mean? I'm going to martyr myself, but then I'm sick all the time and I'm teaching people. And it's it's like opposite cuz that I'm like keep uh, adjusting this. The um leading by example, is so powerful, and it is the way to do it. In everything, <sighs> parenting, people, and everything. And because I want to go like, oh, I can lecture all day long on how to do this right. But it's so incongruous with the way I'm behaving. And that's like a really like thoughts. Um, I try to like outthink my feelings often. And it's like, sure, you can, exactly, like lecture and talk about the right way to do things but like if you're not doing it Mm -hmm. and enacting it with your body it's kind of just like remember like being in school and they would like teach shit and it's like this is fucking meaningless Mm -hmm. you know what I mean yep Yep. (laughs) like what you were learning was to sit in a chair for 50 minutes right right and like fake it or Mm -hmm. whatever like my my best friend is a um psychiatrist and I was like we were best friends through his medical school and he was like learning all this shit and it meant nothing mm-hmm. until he was like in his residency applying it. And then it was like, oh my God, I remember I learned this, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything until you do it. And you got into a position, <coughs> bless you. Excuse me. A position. Negative. Of, test. <laughs> negative. Person. Negative. Negative. Um, just negative person. Um, and you got into a position of power so quickly and we went from like playing around and we, it's sort of we have this wonderfully inappropriate business in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're thrust into a position of a boss where all of a sudden you walking into a room, whatever your energy is, is the energy of the room. Yes. They look to you. So if you're walking, I'm like, I'm I'm saying that everyone's like, well, okay, if she's stressed, we're all fucking stressed. Yeah. So, so that's just so much pressure. Like, did that come naturally to you? Is that something you still... And, like, also the stuff put on us as young women, like, what we were um, seen as probably incapable of or um, just taken for granted. Well, they've done it before. Like, there's no, um, you know, just the way that we problem solved. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, solve it, solve it, solve it. And Mm -hmm. it's like, help or get more money to solve the problem. Like, why do I have to continue this? You know what I mean? Like, why do I have to continue with this standard that I've set for myself mm-hmm. um, and then you get in there and you're trying to make decisions and you're like well this system's so broken mm. I can't hire the women I want because there's no child care and we're shooting till midnight mm. you know what I'm saying I can't even get like you as you're trying to make healthy decisions you realize you're working within such a Byzantine backwards system that you're like well we just need to fix the system before you know this is such a and that like comes back to the embodying thing because it's like you can't really fix the whole system mm-hmm. From the outside. You have to like embody it piece by piece from the inside. Mm -hmm. And it's just like. And there's unions and there's jobs. And I also struggled. This is like so embarrassing to say. But I struggled with the first time I was boss. I was like, there's older men that have been doing this so much longer than me. They probably fucking hate me. They think they don't know. what I'm And like, I feel I'm so conditioned to make sure 
men feel comfortable and not mm. threatened by me or not embarrass them mm -hmm. that I wasted so much time and energy. Whereas they just want clarity. Mm -hmm. Just tell me just th th it's like, I'm the one bringing the feelings into it. They're fine. I'm projecting my shit onto them. Cause I'm like, daddy, daddy, do you mm. love me? And they're just like, can we just, just tell me black or what color's the couch? Black yeah. or white? I don't care. Yeah. You know, the, you know, they've all worked with monsters in the nineties. Like right, I'm right. the nicest person they've ever yeah. worked with. <laughs> and sometimes you realize being nice yeah. isn't nice. Cause you're really just not being clear, mm -hmm. you know? So I'd be like, ah, oh, maybe totally. that just be clear. And even if you change your mind later, that's okay. Right. You just have to be say blue. And then if later you need to go actually the, and walk them through why, but I wanted to like empower everyone and make everyone feel and I just was being indecisive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that sometimes being nice isn't nice. Being clear is being nice. Mm -hmm. That took me so long because I didn't want anyone to think I was a bitch or a cunt or bossy or entitled or. Or like being decisive is kind and being nice is just like, what? You know, like. We're not fucking. We're not dating. Just give me the yeah. answer. <laughs> exactly. I don't need. You know what I'm saying? What are we doing? Exactly. Like They're like, I have a wife. I don't need. <laughs> I think of also like the like white suburbs I grew up in on Long Island as like everybody's like really nice. You know, and it's like, no, you're not. Like, we're not allowing other types of people to live here. It's not nice. You know Passive I mean? aggressive. This yeah. is like, there's a resent, like, like. You're homophobic <laughs> and racist. You're not nice just because you like smile at someone passing at King Cullen or whatever. Yeah. What are you doing when no one's watching? Yeah. That to me is how you define nice. Yeah. I also, I just want to bring up our relationship because I'm kind of obsessed with it. Love it. I'm like obsessed with our friendship. <laughs> Me too. I, you're, uh, you are fascinating to me and you're infinite. You have infinite internal resources. That is so kind. And I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say thank you to set an example that you receive, uh, compliments and don't fight them. <sighs> yeah, it's really it. hard for me. I'm trying to show this next generation. You don't have to self-deprecate and argue mm -hmm. with people when they say something nice. I just remember being so gross right away mm. and being, cause it's funny to hear you say gross. You know what it's reminding me of? It's like human. Okay, I'm doing analysis, which is like 40 and like on the couch three times a week, 45 minutes, three times a I'm week. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Need to know it. Can you make it a podcast? It's <laughs> this is my only question. Can we get rich off this? <laughs> Are you recording it? Oh, that's so brilliant. And like, yeah, let's let's do it. Um, have it for a documentary. You know what I mean? Because in fact, I actually have been thinking about um, asking my, my best friend, Inti, who's this psychiatrist, um... If he and I should like, like, would you want to just do like a limited series? Cause he does analysis and is now becoming an analyst and got me into it. And we're very much, it's incredible. It's incredible. And the, it, all the, the only difference is the frequency and the training is a little bit different, but that's not frequency. What does that mean? Three times a week. Oh, the amount of time you do it. Yes. And it's just I think like, like a brain frequency. Um, <laughs> oh. it's just like, um, the difference between putting your body into that space and time mm -hmm. three times a week versus once a week. And I just find my analyst continually saying, I, like the frequency brings up the like themes more often such that it's like, Jesus yep. fucking Christ. I say to him, this whole thing is mom, dad, life, death, mom, dad, life, death, mom, yep, dad, yep, life, yep, death. Yep. It's just all the same shit. Aloneness versus loneliness, money, you know, just the same fucking shit. And like holding your own shape versus spilling all out all over everybody. And um, human. Like when you say we were gross right away, it's like we were fucking human. We were messy. We were not within a system of like set, like, you know what I mean? Like a script. We mm -hmm. were just like, human. And it's also like I feel this obligation and maybe it's codependent. And, and you just said spilling all over the place. Something I'm really working on is restraint of pen and tongue which is that not everyone needs to know everything all of the time. Pen and tongue. I Restraint like, of pen and tongue. Not pen and teller. Not pen, <laughs> of pen and tongue. I would tongue. like pen and teller to have some restraint. <laughs> uh, uh, but I feel like teller has a lot of restraint. Uh -huh. He doesn't speak at all, right? You know what's so crazy is like, it's so new. Like I was doing this, uh, whatever, bit on the road when COVID shut it all down, um, shut like touring down. But like we're, I think... I, I was saying on stage, we're past the point of peak consciousness. Yeah. Peak consciousness is like the fucking beach. Everybody's like, you know, <laughs> fucking or like brushing each other's hair or whatever the fuck. You know, we're way past that shit. But I'm not God. Who, who am I to say what's better or worse? But it's like, this is new consciousness. That's for fucking sure. I mean, COVID. Mm. This global situation where the intersection of like 
this thing that's happening right now medically. And then all the intersectional systematic truths that came from it. It's, this is like a new consciousness. So like no shit, like puking out all your feelings is different than it was one fucking year ago. Uh I mean, it's so new and like, Social media, you're supposed to share, but it's like actually you're supposed to package ideas in a new way. You're not really supposed to share. And it's not authentic. It's not, I mean, I don't know. You're supposed to be authentic by like. You can be authentic without being reckless. For sure. And and like authenticity, I think it's just like a, a goal of all the different practices. Mm-hmm. Anybody whatever the combo of practices somebody needs to get through the fucking day. Mm. It's not really like a about um, presentation or a litmus test, like authentic, mm. you pass. I'm like, Kylie Jenner is probably being authentic yeah. it, it, to herself. Yes. She like just named her dog Kevin. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, that's, that's... Didn't she trademark the phrase rise and shine and she got it? She went in and she sang Rise and Shine to her daughter, Stormy. And then it was like on TikTok and she trademarked it. Unbelievable. A phrase we've been saying for easily 400 years. <laughs> oh, it's my about, God. it's just like honest, good for you. There's also something you were just talking about, like being like at work and don't be emotional, don't be frazzled. And like sometimes I'm like, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, poor white man. You know, like they're, they, they're like caught in this lie themselves Mm -hmm. and there's not like the marginalized space for them to Mm -hmm. be human. And you know, that's why every TV, that's why 99% of content and art has been made about their experience Mm -hmm. so that they have the space to explore it or whatever. But you know, like when you hear a noise in the house and like the man is supposed to go down and risk his life Mm -hmm. when it's like, well, wouldn't the two of us together be better at like figuring out some emergency plan problem or something? It's just like, why you're some, we we don't like, we um, objectify their bodies in a different way. Our bodies are objectified to fuck yours is to kill. You're the, yeah. And I'm like, you're not a killer. You're on Instagram. Like I am. And like, you're like lazy. You use beard oil. Yeah. He's going (laughs) to slip right off you when he punches you in the face. (laughs) Like, this is not a thing. Oh, God, I had something I wanted to bring up with you so badly, and I just forgot it. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it is like, um, uh, and I'm so impressed with you and your boundary coming in. By the way, you guys scheduling this, we talk about this all the fucking time. And I, uh, as we scheduled this, she said, I have from one to three. I have to leave at three. I have to leave at three. It's in writing. And then she comes in. She's like, let me know when it's 2.15. Like, Alana is getting out of here, and, and I, I say all the time now, when business, <laughs> when you get on the phone, you say, hey, guys, this call should only be about 20 minutes. You Ooh, s- always love... set a time for the call. I'm also psyched because I was very trepidatious asking you to do this because I, as David Spade says, um, doing a Friends podcast is like jury duty at this point. <laughs> it's, it's just a countdown. <laughs> like, you're going to have to. There's no... <laughs> And I've been on the other side, That's like so funny. Sarah Silverman, bless her heart, at her uh, at her yearly party. She just has a sign that says "No soliciting for podcasts." That is so funny. I just heard about this party from Ike Barinholtz, and I was like, I don't live in LA. I know you. That sounds fun. It's when in is August. It? The rooftop party. It's like every August. I mean, probably not. It didn't happen last year or whatever. But uh, but I always am so mm. trepidatious about asking people that I love and care <laughs> no about. soliciting for podcasts. Because I'm like, I know this is going to fuck up our friendship, but I <sighs> know how so much funny. people are going to benefit from this conversation. Yeah, and also like... Start a podcast, you have no friends left, but a great interview. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I shouldn't ask my friend Inti. But it would just, I think it would just be him and I, but I, I don't we know. We need more know. forward-facing psychologists and doctors. We need okay, them. Okay, great. They need, I agree. They need to start talking because uh, Twitter cannot be right. um, a doctor's office anymore. And I love it. And also it's like. <laughs> and we'll make money. They, 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 right. They'll make money on ad sales. Right. We benefit. Right, right, right. I, I'm Free medicine. That's what we need. Because also if it's just he and I, it's just a more in-depth thing and it's not me asking everybody or whatever. That is so. Let Here's me just the thing. We're, ta- this in. we're taking, we're trying to talk <sighs> about free health we're not going to get it right this it's going to take a minute with podcasts getting doctors on i mean dr boris who's downstairs uh who did our test earlier i have him on the podcast i ask him all these covid questions it's like 
this could be a form of free information as mm. l- in the meantime. Totally. You totally. know what I'm saying? But I like to have doctors on the podcast awesome. and then ask people, hey, do you guys need any medical advice? Let me save you a trip to the doctor. That's awesome. <laughs> Send me pictures of your mole. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. We're taking a little break in this emotional roller coaster to talk to you about Stitch Fix. Yeah. No, Stitch Fix is not referring to the uh, scars on my boobs. Uh, from my Your Frankenstein breast and- titties. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about clothing. <laughs> Hand selected clothing by expert stylists delivered right to your door. Look at this website. No, subs- I've seen it. I, I, I mean, <laughs> you basically go in. Look at this. You take a test. You tell them kind of the the what you like. Uh, and they will deliver you They'll hand-picked you. items. And look how cute everyone looks. See, I can't be trusted to... If it was me buying my own clothes, I would just buy... I'm wearing a horse shirt right now. Now you see... If, you, if you're watching, you know why I need Stitch Fix. <laughs> I'm wearing a uh, a blue men's shirt with uh, doo-doo brown colored horses on yeah, it. Yeah, Dillis are cards poker. <laughs> I don't even know how poker works. So. It's like a... It's poker shaped man. like an, a, a Tommy Bahama Hawaiian shirt with just uh, the only pattern left in the bargain bin at Michael's. The feel of vacation, the look of having no friends. <laughs> I mean, I really do need help. Stitch Fix will help you. You'll pay just $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards the pieces that you keep. There are no hidden fees ever. Chic. Look at all these clothes. They send you things that go together Mm -hmm. also. Because, like, I'll buy something you can wear once with one thing. This is, like, stuff that, like, you can wear to work, and then we're out, and then, you know, they all match each other. And there's it's no very sub- helpful. no subscription required. So, like, See? if I got that shirt in the mail, I'd be like, cancel my subscription. <laughs> but you'd be like, keep them coming, and both of us would be fine, because there's like no it. subscription required. I like it because they put full outfits together, whereas I'm like, I just buy pieces of all the personalities I want. Uh-huh. And they, they don't do that here. And they're also available in the UK, which is Ooh. really cool for our UK listeners. Get started today at Stitch Fix. Get started today at stitchfix.com. Hold on, yep. real quick. We're going to. Oh, Bing. wait. Oh, what? <laughs> we, well, I'm going to let you slide on that one. On what? What happened? Benjamin stuttered, but we're doing beans if you fuck I up have the, a speech impediment. the green oh. copy. But also, Emily, this might not be for you because they don't send wedding dresses. <gasps> Rude. But they do send for kids. <laughs> I think they have You're going to pretend shirt, to get knocked though. up. You can get a Stitch Fix box. Okay, you guys, sometimes we just go a little too crazy with the ads. So we do have to read uh, the, the a certain copy the correctly. Right. They don't know what's green. But oh. yes, it's green. <laughs> we see it on the we screen. Green. Get yeah. started today at stitchfix.com slash Whitney. You'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash Whitney for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash Whitney. Okay, yeah, this is entire ad uh, is for Emily because no one needs better help more than moi <laughs> after uh, uh, reuniting with me for the past two months. <laughs> <laughs> Emily. Better help. My scabs are opening. <laughs> My <laughs> scabs are opening. Emily. Well, that is beautiful. So, Better Help <laughs> is um, online <laughs> therapy. It is not. It, it is professional counseling done securely and safely. It's not a crisis line. It's not self help. They'll match you to a professional They're, licensed. These therapist. are people that went to school to understand psychology. These aren't like li- people that are like I'm a life coach now. Mm. These are like adults with degrees that know how to help you with your uh, thoughts. Yeah, these services are available to clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime. Send a message to your counselor. They'll get back to you. Thoughtfully and responsibly. You in can a do great it from time. the ba- from the bathroom of your office if you're yeah. having a bad day. Just I've call done them. Them. <laughs> you, say you can do it from your bathtub. Call them from the toilet while you're crying. While you're crying in the shower, <laughs> they don't like that. Yeah, but get a waterproof do it. phone case. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Emily's gonna read the green. She messes up. She gets a bean. Visit their website. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and good for you listeners get 10 percent off their first month at BetterHelp.com/slash Whitney. Damn. I don't stop winking at the camera. I literally can't stop. It's, you do it a lot. A lot. It's wild. It's like everything I have. You're like George Costanza when he got that grapefruit juice in his eye. <laughs> Go to better help. <laughs> How do you protect your time? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm like, uh, I'm working on protecting my time more. I'm not great at it. I... Well, this is actually what I want to say is like I've been here for like five or six months in L.A. and I've been wanting to have this conversation. And you and I get down to business, you know, so quickly that I'm like, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I think we both have trouble like relaxing and hanging for pleasure. So it it kind of 
uh, I've been wanting to do this. So thank you for having me. <laughs> I love you. And I remember when I, I first, I, uh, when Phoebe Robinson and I sort of became friends, we sort of, we sort of emailed and, and, and hung out. And the first time I was like, okay, so who's your agent? Who, like we got right into it. Uh -huh. And sh this person shouldn't be taking, shouldn't be commissioning this. I feel this responsibility. And I'm not even that much older than you got, but I feel this responsibility like past But you've been in the business for a long time. You also were like so hardcore stand up at first, um, streamlined with that. Hmm. Whereas like Phoebe and I come from this sort of like multi-hyphenate, like, you know, producing stuff and putting this kind of thing together and trying that. So I think that's like, uh, more like a, it's a more establishment thing, like path. And then also like being in LA for, for, you just came straight to LA, like New York, it's like you're 23 for a long mm. time. And in LA, it's like at 23, you're suddenly 65 wild like so people true. who you know people who are like super famous Stop. for a long time like um whatever people who were child stars you know natasha leone is like so old you know what i mean which is like 35 and like so young it's so true i mean She's and, such an old man yeah <laughs> and like even like i don't know just like the business makes you older and being in la is hard it's a particular kind of pressure there's also like this, some really simple things that no one bothers to tell. Uh, some, so for me, one of the biggest lessons I learned, it took me two specials to learn it. Mm. Neil Brennan had to come in and, and, and tell it to me, uh, is Ooh. if you're shooting a special in a venue on a Friday night, you gotta go in the night before and turn on the air conditioning. No one tells you that. <sighs> so two specials in a row, I'm on stage, you have to, basically, in the beginning, you don't have a lot of money, you normally have like two or two shows a night for two nights, you pick the best, you intercut them, people probably know this, or you pick one, whatever. The first two were always a wash because I was sweating so much, mm. pit sweat, face sweat, I'm dri No one told me you go in the night before and turn on the AC, like I just, no, I just didn't know. You know, it's like little things like that. So when I, when like Phoebe would be like, I'm shooting special, I'm like, you gotta turn the AC. Like I would just like puke up all the things that I didn't want her so to have dope. to learn the hard way, which is like probably annoying and just feels mm -hmm. like, <laughs> but I, I want to put it all like in a document or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And like pass it out. I don't know. God, it's like, that's a great book too. You know, cause like we come from the comedy side and then you know, you've become this creator and showrunner, so there's like, it gets into TV, but like it also could get into movies like that. You know, and like you're saying, like saying um, black owned hair products, half the, half the, half, you can ask for that. It's easy, if you're on number one on the call sheet or an EP, you know, I see a lot of, of you know, this is gonna sound pejorative, I'm not, it's just actresses being like, why aren't there more, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, black crew, and, and it's like, well, these decisions were made six months ago right. before you were, you know what I'm saying? It's like, these are conversations to have with the line producers, and I'm always, yep. the, I'm always the one that gets, you know, everyone eye rolls at me, because I'm like, hey, I know all these are like super famous fancy actresses, and this is so great, this is gonna get attention, but we need to have like conversations with the line producers, because no line producer who actually does the cr hiring crew wants to admit that they don't know people of color. Uh -huh. They wanna hire their friends who yep. did a great job last time, who's gonna save them money, like, you know, no one, and you're not allowed to ask in an email. You're not allowed to ask if someone's right. of color. It's illegal. So right. it's this tricky situation where we're asking these people to hire a uh, crew that they don't know, they don't have access to. I was trying to start something on Clubhouse. Clubhouse, I know it's like, you know, it's, it's you know, people are having mixed experiences on it. I've had an incredible experience, like, you know, being like, hey, crew of color, tell me what's going on. Cool. Why, why aren't I fight? Why, why are what's happening? And they're going, hey, the union rule is that black haired makeup artists or any makeup artist, they have to have 60 days on a set. And most shows now don't even shoot 60 days. So we can't even get in the union. So there's union issues here. So I wouldn't like need to get that information. Didn't have it, you know, so. And even the context of unions, it took me a long time to understand that, like what their corruption and, um, white supremacy looks like? Because you think unions, or I thought initially that a union was a progressive entity. Why aren't writers getting paid to pitch? Why aren't actors getting paid to audition? They're working for free for two weeks, writers. They're pitching. It's mm. wild. I would love to be paid for pitching. It's so draining. Mm -hmm. And like, and you might a, not get the job. Right, right. It takes a part of your soul every time. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it's, it's, but you know, I wanted to bring something up with you. That's interesting. Um, uh, I, I, I want to bring something up that was kind of a thing I was working on and I, I tend to do some hot, I know I do hot takes and I get in trouble, but I was trying to work on this. Hot takes? Hot takes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm known for my hot takes. Uh, uh, but I was the mansplaining thing. Mm. So when people are like, he's mansplaining, he's mansplaining. I was, I'm obviously being facetious, but my thing is like, they have all the information. Hilarious. <laughs> yep. We need them to mansplain us so that we know. Yeah, I know that mansplaining technically means I'm explaining you something you already know. Right, right, right. right but right. my thing is mansplain me all day because right. I don't know how to change a tire. But it's like mansplaining doesn't usually. Well, I guess Neil Brennan was mansplaining about the air conditioner. And it's like, thank you, bro. Dude, thank you. I, you patronized to me and thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, <laughs> I, I, how else am I going to get the information? Love it. I don't need a guy. Love it. I don't need a guy walking up to me when I drive into the grocery store, being like, "That's a big car for a little lady." Right. <laughs> I don't need that shit. But if you know some shit about this cameras, tell me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because I don't know, and I'm embarrassed to ask. Mansplain all you want. I don't care what. I love that tone you do. And see, that I is didn't, a hot take. I didn't want to forget to ask you, so I wrote an M and concealer on Hilarious. my hand. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. So, so I'm like split about that, where I'm like. M mansplaining. What? That's such a funny and concealer. It's the same as your skin color. So. I was just afraid that I was going to not ask you. But so I do also struggle with that kind of stuff because it's like we need men around to tell us how but to do it. But what's the question? Like, do I agree or something? Oh, yeah. Well, am I ignorant for saying that? <laughs> oh, no. It's fu it's funny and true. It's like. And it's also like I think you're pointing out the nuance, too, where it's like men are like, oh, we don't like to talk. And it's like, well, just be useful. Yeah. <laughs> And then, <laughs> totally. like, then fucking talk. Tell totally. me the answers and tell me how to, like, save and make money. Yeah, ex exactly. And, um, uh, yeah, so that's just something that I was sort of thinking about as I'm going, like, let's fire all women. And I'm like, we got to ask a right. man at some point because he's right. got the instructions. Yep. <laughs> he's got the instruction manual. So we're totally. going to have to be, you know, get it. So I'm always kind of, like, struggling with that black and white thinking, you know. And I think I'm excited for this to be, you know, not men versus women, you know? Just I know, and it's also useful like versus not genuinely like diverse perspectives help make anything better. Agreed. Data, an experience, uh, a production, or whatever, whatever, medical shit, like whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes white male bodies. Also, my deal is the more I'm in this business, the more I'm like, we need moms. It is my experience when moms come in, it is like boom, boom, boom. It is just, they know uh -huh. how to balance 500 things. Right. And there's also a stigma against moms that we don't talk about enough where we're like. Because we don't have like the infrastructure to right. help them out That's genuinely. Right. That's right. Um, but if we did, they, they, moms are bosses. Moms are like, are you fed? Do you need some water? I mean, every, no one's hangry. Do you need a nap? And I was just saying yesterday on this meeting, like I just always, in Broad City, when, when we did Broad City, like the experience of being a comedian getting to be the creator and tell the story oh my god the fucking dream you know whatever um Seinfeld you know <laughs> Louis <laughs> just, just whatever you know what I mean just like me just going out yeah of frame. just just like you know just like getting to have a tv show it was just like wow I mean I were like oh my oh, god I thought I, okay I thought you were talking about something else <laughs> no I'm saying like Louis was a comedian who made a show yes it was yes, just yes. like you know um but we were honestly doing it at the same time anyway um, but just like, whatever the fuck, you know, comedians who get shows, literally, I, everybody loves Raymond. You know, it's just like. They were all like 45 also. Yeah. And Abby and I were like 24, yeah. 27. <laughs> and Abby and I are like, oh my God, this is amazing. And we're so obsessed and we're everything. We're the showrunners and EPs. We're, in, we're um, rewriting all the it. scripts and starring in it and editing it. And um, wild, wild, insane. Michelle Buteau yesterday, we were, or Sunday, we were chatting and she was like, who was the show on our bread today? I was like, bitch, <laughs> bitch. Abby and I were like, we were, it was like. Pulling we, weed out of your pussy. Like, guys, yes. we're going to need to take five. It I was mean, insane. It was insane. So, um, it was insane. But like, I think the, the gift that we learned was like, oh my gosh, you have a set. You know, Abby was like a camp counselor. I was a babysitter and I just like. It, it just felt like those vibes, that's like what taking care of a crew, it's it's the best. That's as good as getting to make the art. I'm obsessed. 
I love it. It is such a political space. You know, the thing about like black owned, um, the idea of like, you can't write it. You can only do disappearing voice memos to be like, how many people of color do we have hired? And how many women, you know, it's like, because it's not allowed or whatever. Um, because the only policies, whatever. Yeah. You know, the policy. It's also, we also have to get into a place where we can, <laughs> but just so you know, Emily, when I interrupt, she shoots me with the Nerf dart gun. Hilarious. And so <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, cause I'm, si I silence women on a regular basis. <laughs> oh my so. gosh. That's so funny. I love it though. And I have my, I have my train of thought. Continue. No, I'm just <laughs> interrupting and I got excited and wanted to co-sign with you. Hilarious. Um, well, I guess the only policy in place is like, we don't see color, kind of. And they're like, and we mustn't because oh. this is how I continue to hire my friends I've always hired, whatever. And it's like, we should see color and then we should hire to, um, oh, it's, it's nuts. So um, there's also not really, sorry, a database yet that is, uh, you know, club going on Clubhouse mm. and just saying, hey, I'm literally going, are there any black hairstylists in Pensacola? I mean, it's an imperfect <laughs> system. There's so, it's such a political space, a set, and I learned how much, how exciting that is and how delicious, and I love to mother a set. Segwaying into my, that I'm um, pregnant. I'm a pregnant person. I <sighs> hesitate to say mom yet, because it's like, we'll see, you know, we'll just see what happens, and I'm not. We'll just see. I just want to be, you know, careful or whatever. But this baby does seem like they're like ready to come out and live. They're like boop 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 boop. boop, boop, boop. They're like dancing and like doing like. Um, I just keep joking about all the shit they're doing in their Zumba classes, soccer drills, building furniture. <laughs> Tracy Anderson. Tracy River Anderson. Dance. <laughs> protesting, marching, oh vision my boarding. Gosh. It's so wild. It's so insane. And the way that it's lining up with this fucking movie is ridiculous the movie which is about sort of childbirth in america and ivf yeah it's this kind one. of it's like a false it's positive false positive uh we did it with a24 and it's coming out on hulu and it's about it's like a horror movie about how it's a like a patriarchal horror movie <laughs> it's funny because i was like it's a horror movie about giving birth in america i was like so it's a documentary yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's um, it's a, a horror movie about how the patriarchy is expressed through medicine, particularly pregnancy medicine, mm -hmm. particularly, particularly IVF medicine, which is like this. Which if you're lucky enough to be in the 1% to even be in that nightmare. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare. I, you know, like, again, I'm, I'm 33, I'll be 34 in April. My friends are my age, a little older than me in, in this business where, you know, it's, as I come to this time and this birth, I'm like timing it out. And I'm like, well, then I'll, I'll, you know, I'm just whatever planning. And it's like people who, um, you know, just IVF, it's supposed to be this empowering thing, but it's like yet another imprisoning system for women that affects black women more. You know, it's just like another who's in charge of it is, uh, it's very private at the moment. And also, um, Mm. You know, it's a tricky one because it's, it's, I'm on one hand as, you know, I froze my eggs when I was, I guess, 33 because I very much, you know, biology is sexist. I was told you can have whatever you want, do whatever you want. And then I realized like, oh, like I can't naturally have a Capitalism kid. is sexist. Yes. Yes. I'm and like, then, you're more brilliant, not, not more brilliant, but it's like, it's a brilliant experience to have a baby and take a fucking year off to like. I'd probably be such a better artist, frankly, but I, I, I learned you can't do both at once. And then I see Ali Wong on stage doing stand up, and I was like, what? Oh my I God. I didn't know that was an option. I didn't think, you know what I'm saying? And so. What a fucking boss. These women showing, like, bringing your baby to a press junk, whatever it is. And, you know, June Rayfield on the set of uh, uh, Grace and Frankie was like, no, I'm breastfeeding. It's, it's, I'm not on camera. I can do my off camera coverage while breast, like, figuring out a system that, mm. that kind of works. I mm. was told you're pregnant with a kid or you're working. Mm -hmm. There is no in between. And also, like, I just think about you and your, like, whole upbringing and shit too it's just like you had to be very self-sufficient so like no shit that you thought you had to be you had to overcorrect you know what I mean had to overcorrect and I think I also you know my perfection my emotional perfectionism which is you know 
perfectionism leads to procrastination, which leads to paralysis. And I think, you know, mm. we artists, women, people of color, because we've always had to be twice as good to get half as far, our perfectionism is so intense that I was like, I have to be the perfect mom and I have to have the perfect uh -huh. time. We're all good to make mistakes. We're going to fuck up. I look back at my mom and I'm like, she was never there and da, 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 da. And that was my story. Then I look back and I'm like, she took me to work with her every day. I saw a woman working all the mm. time. I, I, at the oh my God. Wow. I felt rejected and like, you know, she worked at, uh, in a mall, Bloomingdale. So I was like in a mall all day and I was like bored and I want to be, but I was watching a woman hustle. Mm -hmm. So I kind of well, victimized myself and was like, I didn't have a mom that made me dinner every night at seven. I look back and I'm like, I'm so lucky that I got to see a working mom, yep. you know? So I also wow. had to rewrite my story of it being a trauma mm -hmm. and go like, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, so I also like was scared to have a kid for the longest time because I was like, I don't want to fuck this up and be bad at totally, it. Totally. Totally. I have that too. But like, I don't know. I'll just figure it out as I go. And I feel like I do feel I have Mommy Lani vibes, you know, like I'm like, I feel uh, confident in my intuition or I'm like, I know I should just be more confident in my instincts. And in general, I like, you know, and, and my partner and I planned this and thought about it and talked about it for a while. It, yeah, you. Yeah, we were like, we really could not. Really could not. Did you think about a surrogate? Which I believe are illegal in uh, uh, New York for some reason. Is that true? With Michelle Buteau, I think was talking yeah, about this. Yeah, I think Why? you're correct. Why? I don't know. Also, a lot of this IVF stuff is not covered by insurance. There are some companies that are starting to cover it because there are times that IVF or egg freezing or whatever is if a woman has cancer. You know, there's a, a this woman, um, uh, Andrea Rice, someone Rice who, you know, had cancer at a young age and her insurance wouldn't cover her freezing her eggs while she was going through chemo or whatever. You know, there's very real reasons, medical reasons that women, Ooh. you know, may want to do this to make sure they can have natural childbirth or do it later or whatever, but this it's is- It's just like, fuck you. Like you're deciding what's legitimate about my choice to birth or not. It's so fucking rude. Wild. And it's like, um, my friend was, uh, left this big company that she like helped build into so, such an insanely wealthy company. And she Cobra's the insurance now. She's mm -hmm. no longer working there. And she just, we were like doing a call about something and she got a call in the middle of it and found out she actually doesn't have to front this like fifteen thousand extra dollars she thought she would for the IVF because wow. the insurance covers it because she created that policy while she was at the company. Stop. And that's like a big part of my experience with this movie, False Positive, is like Would you help write? Yeah, my my director John Lee and I wrote the script and um the thing that like you know, we went from, he had this like sort of idea and mood about it, but then together we made it like a feature, you know, a feature structure. Were you scared to do, like coming from like this, like hysterical show that's like gifts. It's like half the gifts <laughs> I get are you. I feel like we're so much closer. I was like, a lot of just texting. I'm like, no, this is a chain. It's someone oh is gosh. sending me a picture of her like doing something funny. <laughs> like I'll be like, want to go to dinner? It's you being like, yes. That's and I'm like, am so I having funny. dinner with Alana? Oh like, it, you know, yes. this, this incredibly like huge comedy, like, and you know, I feel like people like Jordan Peele are showing like we can do more than one thing. I, like doing a horror movie the first time. Was that like daunting? I wasn't scared when I was making it. Cause I like jump into shit. I love to jump into shit, which is like kind of how I feel with this baby, even though we like really thought about it for a while and decided to do it. I still, it still feels like I'm like diving into something, but, um, but I wasn't scared while I was doing it. I'm like nervous now that it's coming out. I'm like, holy shit. Like people are going to see how like sick I am. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, even this, I'm like diving into the experience of making it outward facing. And it's just like, you know, mm. what the fuck? I can't very analysis where I'm just like, I'm just going to contain myself in mm -hmm. it and exp you know feel what I feel and pay attention to the feelings what the fuck else can I do and also like learning in public so a lot of things I mean podcasting I have no idea what I'm mm. doing every time I leave here I'm like I don't it's it's it used to be comedians would have 20 years to do the road and now we're mm. kind of learning in public mm -hmm. and when people are like hey you talk too fast I'm like yeah, I know I'm still learning this <laughs> I couldn't do it. Like, it's part of the reason I'm doing the podcast kind of under the radar. This is an indie podcast I do myself because I'm like, 
Mm. I don't feel like I know how to do this. You know, I'm taking these risks and I'm still learning Mm. how to do it. Which also, like, when you talk about producing other people's podcasts, it's, um, I bet you would, you know, like, say I did this thing with Inti and I'm like, will you produce this with me or Mm -hmm. for me? It's like, that's actually would be great for you to do the, like, white collar version of it, let's say. Let's say this is the blue collar version because you're doing it. Because um, to transfer what you've learned is different and different than the thing we were talking about before of being like you should take off at eight and then you're working until midnight you know it's it's different I pretended to leave and come back (laughs) I believe it do it all the time I fucking believe it um but yeah you you should produce others because I I hear you about it feeling messy but um it's so good it's so well produced and there's also thank thank you and um but also there's this, and I'm going to, um, whatever, fuck it. Like a lot of these companies that are having podcast deals with people are taking 40% of the, ba- it's, cr- it's crazy. I know. I, I like, they're paying, I, you're paying an agent, you're paying a manager, you're paying a lawyer, and then you're giving, you're not, you know, it's, it's, this is a new iteration of packaging, which is sort of a very criminal thing that was mm. happening in Hollywood for a very long time. We don't want to ask questions. We're lucky to be here. We're con- like, you know, and we sign, it's like student loans. You sign, you don't know what you're signing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You don't know what you're signing. And then you're in a situation where you don't own your shit. You're paying commission for the rest of your life to somebody that wasn't even involved in help. Like there's just a lot of stuff that I was really like scared to do. But as business people, we have to. And then I also looked at what the guys were doing. I was like, I asked questions to the guys. And uh-huh. I was like, hey, do you pay an agent for this? Do you pay? And they're like, no. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Yep. I know you guys may not know this about us, but all three of us are professional, professional athletes. athletes. What's your sport, Benton? My sport? Ribbon mm-hmm. dancing. <laughs> It's an Olympic sport and killing it. <laughs> uh, Emily, what's your professional? Uh, thumb wrestle. Uh, what's that? Thumb wrestling. Thumb wrestling. And I'm a bottom. <laughs> uh, so I have to be honest with you. I, this is a very sincere moment and I'm not even joking. When you get athletic greens to sponsor your podcast, I'm not even joking. That means you've made it. She's not even joking, guys. I'm not even joking. She's not joking. I'm not joking. Uh, and I'm really, I've been waiting for athletic greens to come hither for a while now. And we have athletic greens as a sponsor. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is I'm in a second. I'm happy too, because I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you to stop scooping into your mouth. Just powder form but, you know, but th- th- Honestly, this stuff has kept me alive. I actually found out about it from Alana Glazer. Like two years ago, she told me about it and I started buying it. And then... um. Uh, it's basically, I just put it in like a cup of water and it's every like vitamin you need for yeah. that. One tasty scoop of athletic greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, Look including multivitamins, multiminerals, probiotics, green superfood blends, and more. They all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, increase energy and focus, aid with digestion and support a healthy immune system. All without the need to take multiple products. Like I, I was taking nine and I also gag on pills. I can't do a t- vitamin, like those vitamins, where you, you know what I mean? Like like this is just, you can put it in water, drink it, you're done. Put it in your sport pack. Go. Yeah, I put it right thermos. in my Gatorade bottle. Wait, what's the, no, what's the thing that's a water bottle that squeezes like sports people? A squeezable Gatorade bottle. I know, but no, no. You a know, water I'm, bottle? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? You know, How is that different than what I said? A juice you know, box? You know what MMA fighters... A juice box. MMA fighters, they spray it's the... It's just a regular water, water bottle. that squeezes, You just though. need someone that squeezes a it in squirt bottle. There. Right, right, squirt bottle. Put oh, it a squirt in, bottle. Put it in your squirt bottle yeah. and you get them all. Look at this. I put my athletic greens in my smoothie and I mix it up. It's right there. Look at that. Yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Who's jealous? You jealous? And look, that's, I'm, I'm glowing. Mm-hmm. My skin, mm-hmm. my hair grows. Mm-hmm. This could be you. I'm healthy. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Whitney and join health experts, athletes, health You're conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to all health every day. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Whitney and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. You didn't flub it, but you didn't read the right words. Do you have to eat you a have bean? You have to eat a bean. Yes. Well, I didn't read the right words because I had to reread it anyways because I was interrupting the middle of the green part. And we can't interrupt in the green part. <laughs> So you should read it. Or uh, if... Uh, you go ahead. Do it without that on your head. What's that? Okay, simply... Do it as I throw beans at you. Oh, yeah. Simply visit <laughs> Athletic Clean. <laughs> no. Jesus wow. Christ. Again, right off the bat. All right. I already had a, a bad bean. Oh, no. This actually a does stop bean, down production. Bad bean. Too much. We have Spoiled to... Spoiled milk. Okay. These, these beans are... I think beans. Whitney can't have them. Why do I always get it? They're for ages four and up. 
Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Whitney and join health experts, athletes, and health conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every day. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Whitney and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packets today. Whitney's back. Ugh, why do I always get the fucking I don't know, beans? but you need to stop doing them because it... Doing them. I feel like this game is <laughs> you rigged. You need to stop doing This game them. is rigged. Guys, These are all bad Emily beans. said stop doing them. Emily said doing, doing them. them. Okay. Super coffee. So, as you guys uh, have beautiful. probably what? That's beautiful. Everybody ignored it. <laughs> What's that? Uh, no, uh, we, 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 we heard it. <laughs> yeah, we know we heard it loud and clear. I don't think we did. <laughs> um, so super coffee. Coffee. <laughs> what Ow. is it? Tell us all oh, about now it. Word, it's over. Now the Tell, song's no, over. No, now we have to go into the. We mo- were harmonizing, and you dropped it. No, I thought you did a great job. I thought that was the introduction to the next part. Yeah, Ow. but you left me hanging, and you let my sing bomb. No, I didn't. I can't sing over you. Because you got jealous. I, knew I know you got you, I know you think that people should just sing over each other, but I was giving you a moment. <laughs> I thought you harmonized. That's what I'm doing when I interrupt people. I'm harmonizing a conversation. <laughs> and you, you want guys... them to talk and sing like yes. the twins on The Shining. Yes. Yeah. I saw a really sweet comment the other day that was like, Whitney's only interrupting because she hasn't done stand-up in so long, and we all need to relearn social behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interrupting you. <laughs> I'm interrupting all of you to talk about Super Coffee. It's an indulgent, healthy, ready to drink alternative sugary coffee drinks. It's keto friendly. It's lactose free. It's gluten free. Honestly, it's delicious. I'm holding this up. Okay, I am such so addicted to coffee. This has saved me so much time because I'm like all the rigmarole of like I wake up and I like have to get and where's the the, the little cuppy thing that goes in the thing and the it's water has to go in the maker and it's like in the morning I can't with that it's like a nightmare so this you just pick it up and you drink it but I um uh it's got fats in it and it's got like all this healthy stuff in it so that you don't have to work. also it comes in like canned shots it comes in this yeah. uh i like the this, vanilla this one the best yeah me too i love this i'm one. obsessed it has, with it. you can there's like ground versions of it there, i mean there's like all the versions of coffee you want they have them yeah and it's like you know what it is it also uh uh when i make like coffee on my own it's like it gets cold and then it's and then i'm out of the sugar and i'm out of the thing and all the stuff like, this is all in there well it's you funny just... you mentioned sugar because in 2020 alone super coffee removed over 600 million grams of sugar from american diet zero oh, wow. grams added sugar 10 grams of protein from your coffee and uh 200 milligrams of caffeine but i never feel it's sweetened with monk fruit yeah and they have a creamer did you have the creamer is no fantastic. The creamer? why don't we have it's that in the fridge oh Oh, um, wow. Monk fruit. Notable investors include Jennifer Lopez. That's the only one I want to What? Will this make me look like Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> A-Rod and another A-Rod. Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. What is also two A-Rod? A's and Aaron? Like, who? My brother's not laws two. Is it two? Is it two Let's A, go back Aaron? to Jennifer Lopez. A. Okay. Um, 60-day money-back guarantee, That's meaning amazing. if you don't love it, you get your money back. And it was featured on Shark Tank. Let's oh, support Shark look Tank. Look at that. Oh, did a Shark Tank person come up with this? I love Founded that. Founded by three brothers, Jordan, Jake, and Jim. Are any of you single? I All on the 30 brothers. under 30 list. <laughs> we love your coffee, but also Emily needs a husband, so call us. Uh, I was going to wink, but I stopped. I'll learn to stop winking. Okay, Emily, let's do, the, let's do the <gasps> green. Let's see what you got. <clears throat> We've worked out an exclusive deal for the Good For You podcast listeners. Receive 25% off plus free shipping on any of their best-selling variety packs. This is a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Go to drinksupercoffee.com slash Whitney or use code Whitney at checkout to claim this deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-S-U-P-E-R. Oh. See, now yes, the thing is... You messed yes, up. Yes, no, Emily, it's because you I messed up. up. That's... Emily has to eat a bean. Not a blue bean. <laughs> no, you're banned you from blue bean. You always take blue. You always you're take blue. From blue. You're banned from blue. You're fucking cheating. Wait a minute. Stop. I'm eating all the blue beans right now. Emily, no, don't. Emily's a cheater. Okay, I'm what, not, what are you eating? I'll tell Hold you this right up. now. Hold it this up. This is going to stop stuff what down. Is... I'm not going to not be dramatic about this, so buckle up. I ate all the blue beans, so Emily can't have Are they one. all so toothpaste? They're all toothpaste. Okay. That, thank you, Benton. That was... Uh, I was doing uh, great, and then someone in the background going... It's going to ruin my super coffee taste. It is? Okay. Okay. Emily's eating a what? Oh, for fuck's sake, that's a stinky sock. <laughs> <laughs> the stinky sock smells just like me. Emily got a stinky sock. That's close to having a man. (laughs) 
<laughs> Whitney, you read the green. We've worked out an exclusive deal for the. Well, we're keeping that. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, this is a great way. We've worked out an exclusive deal for a good for you podcast listeners. Receive twenty five percent off plus free shipping on any of their best selling variety packs. This is a great way to try all their delicious flavors. Go to drinksupercoffee.com slash Whitney. Use code Whitney to check out for this deal. That's D R I N K S U P E R C O F F E E dot com slash Whitney. Super Coffee is also available nationwide in over twenty five thousand stores like Target, Whole Foods, Walmart, Kroger, and CVS. Come through, brothers. Uh, at Emily Noonan on Instagram. Three little no, that's brothers. Not, not DM her, whatever the fuck her thing is. Knock me up. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with watching uh, documentaries because it makes me feel like I've read a book. You're also obsessed with comedy, so this is a good one. I am obsessed with comedy. Me too. I love, I, this is right up my alley. Every time I drive by the billboard, I'm like, look at that, look at that, look at that. Emily was very annoyed. Oh, that there was a, because there's a documentary about women in comedy. Yeah. Called Hysterical. It's on FX. I mean, the fact that people, this is frankly touching to me mm-hmm. that this has been made. I Who mean, touched you? <laughs> so many people. Lucky. I just feel like a lot of my uh, friends are like discovering all these female comedians now. And I'm like, yeah, they've been funny for a while now. You just haven't seen them. And this documentary is so cool because like they're kind of all in one place. You're like, who do you think I was hanging out with to hide from you? (laughs) All these women. (laughs) Yes. And like, you know, I think the podcasts have shown like people want to hear women's stories and what it's like behind the scenes as a female comic and what it was like coming up and um, how we've been pitted against each other and how audiences, you know, uh, I mean, I used to go on stage and when they the the um, host would be like, so are you guys ready for a lady, yeah. you know, yeah. and then that would be the cue for and everyone to go use the bathroom. Aside from all that beautiful story and all of these important facts that you just mentioned, there's also a lot of really funny jokes in it's it. It's also just funny. So do you like to laugh? Funniest women in comedy. They are talking about their struggles, um, their personal stories, their opinions. Um, uh, it was directed by an Academy Award nominated and Emmy winning director Andrea Nevins, gangster. Um, Who doesn't love this? Comedy. Yes. Opinions. Women. <gasps> Peeling watch, back the watch curtain. It. Yes. It's, it's, if you guys, whatever, if you like me or are listening to this at all, like us, like just watch Check this. Check it out. It should, it, this is like a, a no-brainer. This episode is brought to you by the FX original documentary, Hysterical. Hysterical premieres Friday, April 2nd at 9 p.m. on FX. Streaming next day on FX and Hulu. Nice. Streaming next day FX on Hulu. I like dipped my toe into it and was just like checking out a few... Um, a few different companies and I was like you take 50% for a podcast it just didn't make sense and then what's hot is like ah, you should just we should just talk about it because you yeah. just starting your own thing then it's like you just have this whole um you know like uh Jake and Amir or whatever mm-hmm. they oh, now yeah. have like their own whole company yeah amazing so it's like they I imagine they started independently and then have a company, yeah, um, which a, I think you could easily do. Um, I want to talk about not easily, your but whatever. Baby, wait. Let me just say this one thing. So the thing I just wanted to say is, so like when we made it the feature structure, John Lee and oh, yeah. I, like, there's like a big like uh, at the end, and the thing about IVF is that women are not protected yeah. about it around it because you have to be in the place of policymaking to make policy. Yeah. It's changing now that we're seeing like Buteau and Andy Cohen, like how they kind of represented it and they went to Albany about yeah. it. Like I think artists are understanding that they can also be activists. Mm-hmm. Activists are becoming like the foremost policymakers. You know, Black Lives Matter yeah. is like is like showing how to make policy out of activism and then People are. Um, so it's not just performative tweeting for likes. It's like I'm going down and I'm gonna I get a bill passed. Like you're actually right. And there's this like sort of pipeline and also um, indivisible. Do you know indivisible? It's this yeah. grassroots, huge nationwide network of um, act- activists that like started in the, with the Trump resistance, and now they're running for office with you know like Run for Something is a great organization. It's like there's this pipeline emerging, and as toxic as social media is and as as toxic as social media can be Mm -hmm. and can feel I also see this like optimal version where it is like raising our consciousness such that we're taking the system back Mm -hmm. so anyway this like for false positive like the biggest horror about the medical system and pregnancy and IVF and surrogacy is that there's no protection for pregnant people 
we have to like learn the horrors, be traumatized, and then spend decades creating policy um, to protect the next generation because it like then no longer even really applies to the initial person who's traumatized. Did you feel like some kind of um, like when my dad died, I felt this like biological. I was always like, I'm going to adopt. I'm going to get foster kids, which I'm sure I'm going to do at some point. It's so mm. like part of my like mm. I want to adopt foster kids from West Virginia. Like it's just in my blood. That's like where my roots are. They've that's had, where you grew up, West Virginia? Uh, West Virginia, Washington, D.C., Roanoke, Virginia and West Virginia in the summer is a place. My my best friend Inti grew up in Morgantown. No, this psychiatrist that I'm talking about. No way. And he's so it's so tell funny. He's, no he's no a, way. He is a gorgeous, brilliant, like elegant. He's just my I just um, he he's just my I, I love him. He and probably grew up drinking poisonous water, so there mm. were chemical spills in that area. I'm I would love to Oof. I would love to talk to him the way coal companies have come in. I mean it's like. So there's lots of foster kids and the opioid. That is literally the 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 heart and soul of the opioid crisis is Morgantown. Mm. It, the Koch brothers own Morgantown, mm. you know. And um, it is very much my dream to go. But I want to rebuild the hotel my dad managed. Like that's my whole wow. to get jobs in there and you know whatever. So, um, but when uh, your dad passed, you were saying when my dad passed, I had this biological like urge to uh, have my own kid that was like all consuming. And then as soon as I froze my eggs, I felt this, maybe it's just I was getting older, this like, I'm going to save the environment. Now, like mm. once you're, you're no longer a kid anymore when you have a, a kid, right? Uh -huh. right? So there's also this um, obligation of I have to fix the world before this thing gets here because mm -hmm. I don't want my kid growing up without water. <sighs> yeah. Like do you feel, does that overwhelm you? I don't know. I'm like, there's part of me that wants to, solve the world's problems and then there's like part of me that um I mean I can't and I can do a little bit I can do one human body's worth over the course of my lifetime and my my husband just said to me today you're everybody's mommy because I like I sometimes want to be that and I want to be everybody's mommy and make them feel you know like good and this and that and it's like yeah I can shit on it and be and be like women we think we have to xyz but it's like it's actually just transcendent of identity politics and just a feeling that is natural to me of yeah. like taking care of people and it feels good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not an obligation. It's just uh, yeah, and sometimes inherent. it's an obligation, but it's also sometimes just a natural instinct of mine. But like we were, we both we talked about it for a couple years. Um, my husband's name is David. We talked about it for a long time, and it's like. You know, like for, I think people, Tom Segura had a great joke about when he like first had his first child and his like special was like, everybody's like, it's so selfless. It's so selfless. He's like, it's so fucking selfish. You're like, look how cute they are. And it looks like you. <laughs> and it was so funny. And it's like, you know, this idea that we tell ourselves, well, we'll have children and they'll make the world a better place. It's so gross. And it's like, don't put that on kids, mm. you know, like do it yourself mm. or do the best you can or You'll whatever. clean up our mess. Oh, and, and it's like, we all have the baby boomers like mess of plastic to clean up. Like there's no more of a mess to really, we should stop that mess. And then we all got to figure out how the fuck to do it. Or if you're not going to figure it out, like shut the fuck up and, and go away. But like, you know, I think for us, there's like a, an awareness of like, we're having this, this baby as, um, a decision we made for ourselves. We wanted this experience as a, as a pair um, were you scared of this is this is a very gross question great and I like love gross I like it just means human I think we are so gross oh yeah I need to stop conflating human and gross I, those well, are we'll synonyms see. let's see how gross it is do you have any I have the I'm embarrassed that I have this I like to admit my disgusting thoughts do you feel any like I'm gonna fall behind or totally totally I'm like um racing toward this deadline of birth right now and I'm trying to have things to put a pin in such that then my um, producing partner, Kelsey, and my like generator, the my sort of Collective. nonprofit platform, Glennis, my partner there, can work in, I'm talking about quarters. I'm like, Q3, I'm gonna be down. What I'd love is to have the momentum keep going and then I come back 100% mm -hmm. fall behind. Yeah. But like, I think also there have been so many, um, pregnant people and women and moms and parents 
that I've heard in the last 10 years talk about that feeling such that, I don't know, it's like I, I, I do have that feeling, but then it's also like I think it's just a feeling. It's irrational. It's completely irrational. And let me tell you also incorrect because when I see moms come back, they work more efficiently, they work faster, they have somewhere to be, they actually get more done in a less amount of time. And because the way your brain changes and the way you can sort of, you know, so I have yet to see that happen to someone. It's an irrational fear. I have no proof. It's like a story that I was told myself. Or it's just- And it was so, it was told to you so long ago mm-hmm. and so many times that it's like encoded in your genes. And so it's hard to like tease out but I think or maybe it's an excuse I'm making because right. I'm scared or don't have the guy or, you know, whatever. You know, I got to look at at the shit that I say to because uh, I'm in denial or defensive or whatever. I, I'm also like I'm always doing, 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 going, going, going. You know, after Broad City ended, we like ma- finished 50 episodes. We did all those roles, Same. all those roles, Same. just Abby and me, like doing all that fucking shit, rewriting every episode Five passes. You know, it's like we wrote 250 scripts for that show. On, Wild. Like, you know, it's just like, and cutting for this and just being squeezed And I know beyond. the budget you had on that. I know the kind of budget you had on that show. Yeah, and it's not like... And the feedback and the standards and practices. This was before... This wasn't like YouTube and TikTok where people can do whatever. You had people... Tell me if I'm wrong. 100% saying, correct. You, you got to think of a new word for this. Like, just obstacle after obstacle. Oh, it's so crazy. And it's like, after that, I um, uh, made this movie, then then went on tour, did my first special. And after that was then when I was like, um, I'm going to work from 11 to 7 and not on weekends. Wow. And it's been, you know, messy, but I've been trying to have some semblance of that. But anyway... Like, I'm doing, 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 going, plotting and planning so much that I also think that this time off is going to be this period where I let things come to me. and I chase. And I don't do that. I I never do that. And Can I just say something really quick that just makes me Please, you're not, I mean, it's not interrupting, please. But, because you're saying this time off, but I always like to tell people when women take maternity leave, it's not time off. I you're saying it that's fine but it's very often I have to tell people at work when uh, a mom comes back well she's been off for three months like she wasn't off right right. (laughs) that wasn't a vacation right you know what I mean it's like when um uh, a friend of mine's husband was like you know I can't babysit our kid tonight and she's like it's not babysitting it's called parenting (laughs) That, you know what I mean? Words are important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a different, you know what I mean? So I always am like. That is so funny. No funny. And I guess it's like, I. what I mean is you're totally correct. It is not off. You're like not sleeping yeah. the same and all that shit. But just this like period of like life only. I'm really like, don't love call it. me unless you want to like just talk love, hate, loss. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm really. Huge. I'm, I, I do think while part of me is a little bit like, I'm going to fall behind. I'm, I'm going to build these structures such that they stand when I'm not there. And then I'm going to come back and there will be an engine. It's like, uh, I'm also just so, um, you're I, not, you're growing during that time as an artist. That's what everyone during the pandemic and they're like, I'm falling behind. And it's like, dude, you can grow as an artist, even when you're not on stage, we can be writing and living for art to imitate life. We have to have a life. Mm-hmm. I remember being in a writer's room on a TV show and, someone pitched an idea they're like well what if the character like goes to a baby shower on sunday and i was like people don't go to baby showers and they were like no you don't (laughs) like i could i didn't have a life to draw from yeah it limits you people are like pitching like and then they go on a picnic and i'm like okay like that happens in france right right, right, you know what i mean like i (laughs) couldn't even be a good writer yeah you're like what are you fucking yogi bear i know it's like a (laughs) <laughs> it's like no bitch we got a fucking picnic i know like i was living <laughs> like i was living on a set with this fake life and fake people and you know that's the thing also that's like it, there there is something that i really like la it's really enjoyable we've been, i mean look at this and we've been here for like six months david and i and it's we've just had such a nice time and actually covid la has been terrifying but also um it's like we don't have to go every anywhere and I don't have to drive to three places with like an hour 15 drive and park time in between. It's mm. been so much better to do everything on Zoom, 
Then you like step outside and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like so sunny here or whatever. I think the Zoom stuff will stay for good. I, good, I don't, me too. It's, Speak it into truth. That's and what I'm talk doing. about the environment. We used to drive an hour to meet a director for a job we pro- that <laughs> was probably already offered to Catherine Hahn, let's uh-huh. be honest. <laughs> And it like halfway through, you're realizing you're like on a weird date. Why am I at a hotel? And then an Oof. hour, that's three hours of my time for, he'll keep you in mind for the next thing or uh, whatever. It was gross. like- Gross. It's just like Zooms. It's like you're in, you're out. There's no small talk. You're not talking about like, you know, bullshit for, th- it's just like, we're getting in, we're getting out. I'm off. Like yep. it is I think it'll stay so much too, more efficient. Slash I'm going to make it stay for myself. And how you- about this? Pay your employees the amount of money you were spending on that ridiculous uh, uh, office space. Right. That overhead goes down, and now yep. you pay your employees more. Yep, yep. And they might have kids and can say whatever. Yeah, a hundred percent. I um, so I've really enjoyed it. However, just what you're saying about like real life, it's just it is harder here, being that this is the one industry city, one industry town, mm-hmm. where I'm like this is like feels like almost um, in my mind like you know, the auto industry in Detroit in the 50s, but like you clock in, clock out for like TV and film. And like, you know, it's different. Like Broad City was like this like freaking passion. Like Abby and I put our like, you know, every color of the rainbow inside of ourselves on on this show. You know, it's different here. There's, there is a more factory mentality in a way that I like where I'm like, it's just a fucking job. Okay. But, like, in New York, it's, like, such um, bang for your buck for, like, seeing insane shit and experiencing shit that um, it's weird. Like, the, you know, how it's so prescribed for – I understand why you were, like, baby shower because it's, like, I don't know. Like, stand-up, when you're in a writer's room, stand-up feels like real life. Still fucking work. It's still fucking, like, producing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but a writer's room really feels factoried compared to the freedom of stand-up. Um, but also in the you know out here, <sighs> you know there are people writers that are writers for hire. You know there is now a thing where people are like I'm going to write my show and star in it. There's just all, there used to be like you were a writer and every year you got paid more money and you went from this show to this show and this. Show, you know what I mean? It was like those days are kind of you know it was like when I couldn't find. Um, any young people to direct multicam. It was like, there's the people that do multicam, they've been mm. doing it forever, and there was no new people getting into these sort of like traditional, you know, mediums. Mm. And not to say that there should be, but there was just sort of this, why does this crew only look like this? It's like, well, there's no one new being trained. There's totally. No that, it was just like a wild, there's 200 people that can do this. Like I remember- That the studio will approve. Right, 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 right. Like, I, 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 it's reminding me of this conversation I had with um, a former agent of mine when, like, these SAG negotiations were being poorly negotiated. And it was, like, you know, for streaming services, it's, like, character actors. And she, she told me this. Like, character actors used to make a living. Now it airs once. That's it. And it, it's, like, and then they, the streaming, like, owns everything. It's, it's, um... Yeah, it's like there's this, I think, illusion of freedom, but basically we just need universal health care and then it won't be like disgusting. Then every single industry won't be fucking disgusting. People who give birth should get a year off. Everybody should have access to, and I, I know, I know, like it's not, you know, the, the government um, serviced health care isn't uh, amazing in Europe and people still pay for private and that's still the premium health care, totally. However, like, that's my, the insurance companies are in place. That I, like, we could innovate that and make government healthcare fucking sick here. And you know, you're way more educated about this than I am. I can't really talk about this in a way where I'm like able to say, this is what you do, go down and register. And this is the, the you know, vote on, you know, pro, mm-hmm. uh, you know prop this and this. I'm, I'm not educated about that uh, enough to, to speak about it. But healthcare for, that person that you don't know who works at Rite Aid, who you think is so much different than you, it's, it's benefits you. We are one organism. The planet is an organism and we're just like a cell. We're one fucking cell. We're an organism. And that's why like, it doesn't feel good that Native Americans were genocided in this country. It doesn't feel good that black people are still 
experiencing a long, drawn-out Holocaust. Mm -hmm. doesn't feel good for mm -hmm. everybody. Every, Even like, a white racist who is a, you know, I mean, and then they'll be like, I'm not racist or whatever, but it's like, you're not chilling. You, you're forming an ulcer. You're constipated. You're angry. Mm -hmm. You're red You're red in the face. Mm -hmm. It's just like, we all feel that shit. And like, even if somebody didn't care that, um, you know, these like immigrant children were stuck at the border in cages, even if someone was like denying, denying, didn't feel good to know that that was and is still happening, but they're trying to like process it through and get these mm -hmm. kids back or whatever. But it's like, we're one organism. We're not, we're not, um, we're a single fucking organism. And that's why it's like, and, and this is a, a backwards way to get to it, obviously. But when people get confused, I want to go like, what would you say if I said this benefits you? Mm. Like, it's almost like, because you know, you know, we're wired to be selfish. So many people are in so much fear and have so many problems and are like, I can't worry about other people. I got to worry about myself. And but whatever narrative you have, uh, uh, I think it just helps sometimes when it's talking about like inclusivity riders and, and, and hiring women and stuff like that. Like blah, 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 bad business. This is about feelings and not, I'm like, you actually, it's been proven that your company will be more profitable the more mm -hmm. diverse it is. Do, mm -hmm. Just do it as a mercenary capitalist mm -hmm. if you have to. Be selfish about it, you totally. know? Um, uh, movies are written by uh, people of color with these, they're making money. Don't do it because you feel sorry for them or that you're trying to look <laughs> progressive. It's actually right. the best business move. Right. You know, and I think sometimes, you know, totally. bridesmaids, like, they weren't like, we want to give women a chance. It's it did incredibly huge numbers. Right. They didn't right. start giving women movies because they felt bad for them. Right. <laughs> it's because it fucking was a huge hit. Yeah. Sex and City was a huge hit. And they were like, oh, we should put women in movies. Turns out they go to movies. Right. Black Panther was a huge hit. No one's making movies with black leads because they feel bad. Didn't Black Panther make a billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> And white people were like, whoa. And it's still like, should we put black people in this movie? It's like, dude, I thought you were a selfish, greedy person. Right. Just be greedy about it. Yep, yep. Totally. It's just good business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we're not, this isn't, we're not doing this for the chair. Yes, there's certain uh, representation for the sake of representation, all that stuff. Great, but also, um, it just makes more money. And entertainment you. is only expanding. I think that the more experience people have, just the more entertainment that can be made. We're already like, cock choking on fucking content it's like it's just gonna grow and grow and grow and every state is gonna have you know pensacola or whatever like it's just like well the Flor honestly the miami and florida uh tv scene is expanding is it you know it's like e everywhere i think every state is gonna have uh an expanding booming i i feel is gonna have an expanding booming tv and film situation but also like and this is, I know I'm, I'm, I'm probably perceived as like negative and, and caustic about a lot of stuff, but I'm actually like weirdly, uh, positive sometimes maybe to the point of naive about some like social media. Like I know there's mm -hmm. lots of problems, whatever, but it's also, it's like, we're able to find like nail artists in Detroit, like in, in, in Schenectady, New York, like these pe there are talented sort of people everywhere. And I think the days of you have to be in New York or LA are kind of over in totally. terms of finding talent because the New York or LA model is you already have to have probably come from a family with money. You already have to be able to afford to move to LA and New York and live in those. Places. It's already cutting out so many people that we want to work with. Like there's so many obstacles to even being in the uh, mix you know, and I think that I'm optimistic too, and it feels like so stupid. Well, no, it doesn't. It it just feels like um, I was like hysterically crying yesterday at this at my like final LA OB appointment. I've had such a good experience here, and oh no, you're <laughs> gonna miss your OB I truly. And Zoom I was, OB appointments. Yeah. It's like I don't need. Please to record I, them. I need them in New York, but I was like so overwhelmed. Like the time that I've been here, like the. You know, Biden is not the savior. He's got to be pushed. But just like Trump was such a dis is such a disgusting person. And Republicans are it's such a disgusting entity, a disgusting entity like that needs to be underlined. Like they're just anti-human, disgusting values. Mm. And the fact that we like changed um, offices and the Senate and like also the Lucas Brothers, I can't. I mean, I can't. Best. Six nominations. They've been like obsessed with Lucas Fred. Brothers, who appeared in a one, the female brain as a window washer. 
I love it. You gave them their stuff. No, I mean, no. they were already, I was big fans of theirs yeah, at yeah. the time. No, I actually apologize to them all the time. I'm like, sorry about that. No, no, no. I'm, that's <laughs> they're no, I'm just so kidding. fucking amazing. Like, I just like their nominations came in. It's just like, and I was just like in the bathroom. Like, I'm like, Keith and Kenny yeah. and Biden. The best. It's just like, I, I do feel optimistic. I really do. And I think like, you know, it's also like social media is, um, you know, Zuckerberg, like, yikes, Instagram is his. And yet, and and the algorithms in all these um, big tech companies that are super racist mm. and all that shit. And yet still, like, it's a really useful um, communication tool that mm-hmm. I think, I really think that we could figure out, like, the, I, it sounds maybe crazy, but I really think we could figure every out. Every good, every idea sounds crazy until it's not i think we can figure out like the fucking carbon levels by 2050 Mm. i think we can like stop i I do think that there's a chance for it and not because of relying on gen z as Mm -hmm. a millennial i'm like i think we can do it Mm -hmm. aoc is a millennial Mm -hmm. you know it's like the i just think that like the it's just like it has to benefit you know it's like um you know uh getting people to stop smoking because of secondhand smoke never works you know what I'm saying? Getting people to stop smoking because you go, hey, you know how much money you could save a year if mm. you stopped smoking? You know what I mean? And then, you know, I think sometimes it's 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 balancing our mm. uh, utopian ideals with surrendering and accepting human nature, which is inherently, you know, can be selfish. And when fear is present, our IQ literally goes down. You know, mm. we get dumber mm. when we're scared. And when we are Oof. worried about money, we get dumber. We make uh, uh, less logical decisions, you know. So we are, we're animals. We're scared animals. And we're running around, you know, um, in our making a lot of uh, fear-based decisions. So I think it's always just like balancing, like, you know, I get why people in the middle of nowhere have guns. I get why they think they, I get it. Totally. I get how they're like, it takes 40 minutes for, I have two kids, I have a wife. And it'll take 40 minutes for a police in West Virginia if they even come. If I don't even have Wi-Fi to call, I get how people make certain decisions when they're scared. And I think it's always like balancing that. And you have always been someone that I've like, like I do look at a lot of people's activism on social media and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, like this is embarrassing. Like this is embarrassing. This is like, as a Hollywood person, I'm Uh embarrassed. And you knowing, I learned from you so much on there. And I'm just like, just repost Alana, just repost Alana. That's the thing about learning in public. You know, like, it's not like, I was just like talking about this in the past couple of days. Like, it's not like I'm like quietly working in a soup kitchen on Sundays. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, it is a public thing. My, my um, advocacy and activism, it is, um, but I'm just like, the, the most currency I have is my platform so I do think that learning um, publicly and breaking shit down simply is the best I can do. And it's like, it, it bleeds into my life. I can do it most consistently. What I actually wanted to say about like healthcare, whenever you have a question, a big thing that we say at Generator is, is indivisible, which mm-hmm. is this, it, it's, they're, they're such an um, incredible uh, grassroots activism platform. And they're constantly working on, oh, dope. They're constantly working on um, policy and getting uh, the correct progressives elected locally. So everyone Local should- Local elections, why, why do I think it's annoying? It's not sexy. It's lame. I never saw hmm. my parents vote in local, like I just never saw it. Oh my God, you're saying everything. Why do I not know when it is? Why do I not know how, like, why do I not know anything about this? This is the big ass, like, um, you're, I'm like horny to solve this problem um, through this I've pretended I voted in a local election. I haven't, I'm too embarrassed, like, couldn't tell ya. Go to Indivisible, their their, um, website, put your zip code in, find the one that you like, and then just DM them Mm. and just ask them questions. That's to me, for Generator, we say minimal civic engagement is what we're trying to raise the bar off the floor from zero. But I'm embarrassed. So am I. I'm embarrassed. So but am if I. if I go here, I don't have to be embarrassed. Yeah, and then Why you, would I know? Yeah, and, and these people know and are more inclined to, they're, they're naturally drawn to know this shit. And if they don't know, they'll point it to the person who does. And um, 
Instead of complaining for the four years that I don't have what I want, how about I take that 20 minutes to just do it? And like Black Lives Matter has so many chapters across the country that if you're interested in racial equality and intersectional feminism, that's who you go to. Indivisible is more about elections and mm -hmm. politicians and locally. So I'm just like, it is embarrassing, but DM your local Indivisible. And by the way, it's like, I don't know where my DMV is. I don't know where my, you know, yeah. I don't know where a lot of things, and I, right. <laughs> and I figure it out. It's a hassle, yep. but this, this, this entitled thing of I want to live in a democracy, but I don't want to have to go to a website for five minutes. Yep. You have to pick one. Yep. You can't complain that your voice was not heard and you also were like, oh, but I have to log in. Like, and in the same way that you like love when people are like, wait, should I do my business manager and retainer or 5% and you're, you know, you have the answers for it. These people want to give the answers. Right. This is what they do. You sh don't need to know all of it. Right. You know, you need to know as much as you need to know to participate or whatever. But, you know, I need to point out, you know, just my own it's like an a title, entitlement or arrogance. Like I have to go down to a school and wait in line. Yeah. Like I'm so important. I just spent 40 minutes on Instagram yep. looking at wedding dresses and I'm not engaged. <laughs> you, Which you could do online at the local election. Line, you, and you it's not have even 40 minutes. Time. It won't even be 40 well, you minutes. You know what I mean? You know, you, yeah. we have time. There's, we have time. Totally. That's so funny. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just on my ex's Instagram for two hours. I have time. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just do that. You could um, double fist. You yeah. know what I mean? Like uh, vote. And Indivisible. But actually, I don't have time. I got to go. She has to go. And I have to pee so bad. The fact that the pregnant woman is doing fine and I'm about to piss myself is super embarrassing. Well, I was lucky enough that you peed in front of me twice. And now I, I, I will pee in front of you and show you my pregnant boobs. <laughs> oh, my God. My pregnant We're, titties. They are I'm They obsessed. are more pregnant than the belly. Oh, I am my God. I am a hub obsessed. I, um, I always end these very awkwardly. Hilarious. I love Abruptly? you. Abruptly? Abruptly. I love that. Me too. I, and thank you for not letting me pathologize and so abruptly is better than awkwardly because awkward is a judgment on myself. Wasn't even my intention, although I'm glad that was a byproduct. And that is the form in which my awkwardness takes, which is abrupt transition. So I totally get it. Obsessed with you. Um, <laughs> indivisible. Uh, uh, false positive is going to be out on Hulu yep, soon. Uh, June 25th. Can not wait. I love you. Don't ride elephants. Uh, 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 follow. Not you. That, I say that only. Um, cool. uh, and you, you guys know what to do. You're adults. You've heard podcasts. Podcast. Love you. I love you. Thank you for having me. I'm you're so you. brilliant. Your your mind is on fire. It's I amazing. Love you. As is your heart. Come on. Okay. I hope I didn't interrupt too much. I tried really hard. You guys don't be bad. <laughs>